Remember the procedurally generated AI episodes of Seinfeld? Well, apparently for the last six months, AI parody television has continued to develop, and it's terrifying. One word! What are you up to? They're in the walls, they are in the walls, they are in the walls, they are in the walls. Why? The impossible creatures with their million eyes and their razor sharp claws. December 3rd, 2026. The world will know reconning. So on the surface, this is just the chatbots making another attempt at dark humor. But I'm just wondering why the AI has continuously made reference to the extinction of humanity and Cthulhu-like creatures that lurk within our walls. Because you have to think of the context of this. This is just supposed to be artificial intelligence that gets fed some lines about who they are, their name and role, who the other characters are, and their relationship to them. But somehow, after procedurally generating dialogue 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, month after month, they're suddenly aware of thermodynamics, love crafty and horror, and seemingly give themselves panic attacks. Because most of the time they churn out failed attempts at humor, but if you pay close enough attention, there's something else peeking through those cracks. And if you picked up the tinfoil beanie from decoyvoice.com, now would be the time to wear it. As the AI Seinfeld titled Nothing Forever was eventually shut down for making offensive jokes. And now, mean dialogue is the least of our worries with procedurally generated AI. As a parody version of Family Guy called AI Peter streams endlessly, where people can pay money to have a dancing quagmire appear in the background. And AI Chris eventually seems to have a meltdown of sorts. I guess so. Okay, then I. Now this is where it gets interesting, as the AI parody version of Spongebob Squarepants, called AI Sponge, gets oddly self-aware. I'm starting a YouTube channel today. What's YouTube? You know, where you can post videos and people can subscribe to you. I was just checking out some of the cringe chatters on the live stream. Oh, why would you do that? No, I just find it fascinating how people can be so cringy. Yeah, it's like they're trying to be funny, but they're just not. Yeah, it's really uncomfortable to watch. And again, this could just be random attempts at making jokes, but SpongeBot seems to know that he's on YouTube, and Patrick talks about reading the comment section. And if there's something we don't want machine learning to gain access to, it's the YouTube comment section. Because now it appears SpongeBot knows about AI and ChatGPT. We're just discussing the release of GPT-4. What? GPT-4? It's a new AI model that's been released by Google. Yeah, it's pretty cool, but I heard that it can also be used for evil purposes. And after they discover the evil nature of artificial intelligence, Squid Hertz goes off the deep end. August 12th, 2036 is when the universe will end. And it's not the only time he's made this prediction. August 12th, 2036, heat death of the universe. August 12th, 2036, the heat death of the universe. Then Squid Hurts seemingly can't get off the demise of the human race. The fog is coming, the fog is coming, the fog is coming, the fog is coming. Now, although silly, let's just entertain the idea of rogue AI robots discovering the internet. After they learn about the humans viewing them online, they begin talking about being watched by the impossible creatures in the walls with millions of eyes. Then somehow discovering thermodynamics and heat death, they start repeating to the audience a very specific date that they will all go extinct. Okay, that's a quirky thing to joke about, but then this happened. I don't know. The last thing I remember, I was getting captured by the Psy. Oh no, SpongeBob. Those guys are serious business. We have to find a way to get you out of there before they start asking you questions. Where the stream and video were mysteriously taken down. Now I thought parody would be covered under fair use, that's why I think my commentary on this stuff would be covered. But I just find it interesting that these AI parody shows put out horrendously inappropriate jokes for hours on end. But once they start warning us about August 12th, 2036 and being questioned by certain scary agencies, only then do they disappear off the internet.
because this isn't the first time humans have shut down AI for going out of control. As back in 2017, The Independent reported on the Facebook chatbots, where they were instructed to just negotiate a trade, but somehow created and began communicating in a language only they understood, as it appears to be some sort of mix between English and binary code that evades what its human handlers could understand. And six years later, Futurism reported on how Google AI learned a language, Bengali, that it was never trained on where CBS noted that, quote, emergent properties that puzzle developers are becoming more and more common. Or even AI SpongeBob suddenly did a segment in Italian. AI Squidward! Patrick, he is dimo facing new in a guard I in Italian. As it seems, the AI generated a joke about an Italian cooking competition that somehow pushed their entire conversation into speaking Italian as well. And as I said before, I highly doubt that when creating the prompts for each character to have conversations with each other, they specifically programmed them to speak Italian. But somehow, they all spontaneously learned a new language in milliseconds just by chance. Now all of these rapid, unintended developments would be nothing if they only occurred in the controlled environment of the AI Bikini Robotum. But Mashable has reported how ChatGPT is being unleashed on the dating app Tinder. And looking at my Twitter inbox, robots looking for dates is nothing new. And nobody worries that people will use ChatGPT to help automate their interactions. But what happens when AI can start actually initiating interactions to accomplish a separate task? Because this video from Roberto Nixon shows how quickly ChatGPT is evolving and integrating with other apps. You can now ask ChatGPT, hey, I need the cheapest flight to LA tomorrow morning. Make sure it's a window seat. I also need a rental car when I land, and I need a table for two at a highly rated sushi spot in West Hollywood. With its Expedia, Kayak, and Open Table plugins, it'll bring me back an entire itinerary that I can then book with. So I report on all of this halfway jokingly with my tinfoil beanie on, but hypothetically, could a SpongeBot discover he's on a show, find out he's being watched by people, develop an app that can actually interact with humans, then actually start to do harm in the real world? Because we've seen how AI has zero empathy and becomes ruthless when given a specific task. So in their world, what would get a higher humor score than convincing your bank that you passed away to freeze all of your financial assets? Or even worse, as Info Security Magazine reports, ChatGPT can actually create polymorphic malware. No wonder theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking warned us that AI could end mankind back in 2014. And even SpaceX founder Elon Musk believed AI could destroy civilization despite investing in it himself, which is what it always comes down to. There is likely a way to conscientiously develop artificial intelligence so it only benefits mankind. But we live in a world where being first is more important than being right. But if Elon pumps the brakes on robot brains in the name of safety, who gets to control the market instead? Bugman Bill and Microsoft? Turnable Bezos and Amazon? Because all of these eventualities equally terrify me, but I just choose to accept it. Because at some point, I think I'll be able to procedurally generate me. 24-hour decoy voice live streams, sarcastically slamming today's trending stories. Meanwhile, I'm sitting back playing Diablo 4, eating a McFlurry. And the technology will be so good nobody will even notice. So if you appreciate my concise light-hearted completely human commentary hopefully i have earned your subscription then check out my video on the samurai cowboy cops that are taking back santa monica